Yo, what's up guys? Joe here. Hope you guys are doing well. Welcome back to another full PC build guide. If you've never built a PC before, you've come to the right place. We break down these tutorials into three parts. First, we go over all the parts and the prices for the build while I walk you guys through the building process. Second, we're gonna be installing our Windows 10 operating system and all the drivers we need to make sure everything's up to speed. And then at the very end, that's when it gets fun. We're gonna play games, a total of nine for this video. This includes a VR title for those of you guys curious on the VR performance. Every single game we're gonna be testing out on this build is listed in the video's description. And every single part used for this build is also listed in the video's description. So the color we're working with today is yellow. So we spray painted our graphics card, CPU heatsink, RAM, and the case. Our Funko Pop of the choice was Miss Yellow Ranger. But anyways, let's jump into the tutorial. Very respectable CPU and motherboard we're working with here. 3000 series Ryzen CPU, the Ryzen 7 3700X. It's an eight core 16 thread CPU and it has a max boost of 4.4 gigahertz. This is Asus's top X570 Plus board and it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. We're gonna be using our IO shield and then these included screws to install our M.2 SSD drive. Under this thing right here, we have an antenna to increase the range of our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Moving on to our CPU, gonna be putting it in there. And we have our AMD Rafe Prism Cooler. We are gonna be using one of these cables underneath it. So our 3700X has a golden arrow on the bottom left side of the chip. We're gonna be lining that up with the arrow located on our motherboard, top left. First, we pull this lever to the side and then all the way up. We line up both arrows. We let the CPU just drop into place like that. We're not pushing it in because if we push it in, we may bend the pins, that's no bueno. Then we pull the lever back all the way down. So to attach our heatsink onto our board, we have to attach both of the clips onto the two notches on our motherboard. The heatsink already has the thermal paste pre-applied, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm first gonna attach it to the top notch with the side that has this lever. Once I got that in, I'm then gonna pull it up, center it in the middle, and then let the heatsink rest on our board. The heatsink is not yet falling straight down on it. We wanna move our lever on this side. Make sure you have it over there, then the heatsink's gonna just fall flat on it. Now we're just gonna push down with our thumbs from right here to attach the second one and it clips in just like that. Now we have to lift the lever all the way up. It will take a lot of force, that's normal, and it should sit in there just like that. Now it's fully attached. To connect the fan to the motherboard, we use this cable. It hooks up to our CPU fan header, which is this one. The heatsink comes with two cables. We're only gonna be using this one. So one end into the heatsink, remove the protective rubber. Now we're gonna plug this in to our RGB header on our motherboard. So now we're gonna be lining up the arrow with the 12 volt pin, which is the first one. It should look like that, and this cable is used to control the lighting of the heatsink. All right, guys. We'll <laughs> For our RAM, we're rocking 16 gigs. We went with Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro RAM. 3600 megahertz is what this kit's rated at. Paint job came out nice on the RAM sticks. We're gonna wanna pull back the second and fourth lever. The RAM only goes in one way. We're gonna line up the split part with the indent on the RAM slot. So the other end doesn't pull back. I like to get the RAM into there first while lining it up with the other side. And once it's in, then I push down on both ends. And then this will clip back up and now it's good. Same thing for our second stick. For our storage, we chose a one terabyte M.2 SSD. This one's by Western Digital. This tiny little thing goes into an M.2 slot on our board. So this motherboard supports up to two M.2 SSDs. We have a slot right here, and then we have a slot underneath this cover. We're gonna be using the screws that came included with our motherboard. The SSD is gonna rest on top of this little standoff. We're gonna screw it into the second point. I then put in our SSD at an angle and then let it lay down. We unsecure it with a Phillips Zero screwdriver. I'm gonna be attaching our IO shield to the back side of the case. With this case, the IO shield only clips on from the sides, not the top or bottom. Before we could secure our motherboard into our case, we have to make sure that all the standoffs are in the appropriate position. So four of them are already placed for us correctly. We're gonna be adding five motherboard standoffs using this tool. So we're gonna be adding motherboard standoffs here, 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 and the last one is down here on the bottom left. I like to insert the motherboard at an angle. I first line up the ports of the board with the IO shield, and then I set it down onto the standoffs. Again, securing it with screws included with the case. 
So our motherboard's in now. It's looking pretty good so far. We're gonna be putting in our fans now. The case supports a total of seven fans. Three up here, three on the bottom, and then one on the side. But we're gonna hold off on the three on the bottom till later on, because if we hook them up first, it's actually gonna block us from hooking up all our bottom cables to the motherboard. Our fan of choice was seven P12s. What's unique about these fans is that these could actually share the same connection by linking up to each other. So now hooking up one end automatically connects the rest of the fans in the chain to the motherboard, which allows for less cable clutter. These are 120 millimeter fans, guys, by the way. So these four fans were placed to outtake hot air. On the bottom is gonna be our three intake fans. We're gonna put that in later. And we also have a dust filter down here. So cold air from the bottom out through the top. So we're gonna leave our fans like this for now. We'll come back to them later. So for the juice of our build, we went with 750 watts gold rated. This is Corsair's RM750X power supply. We paid 135 bucks for it. It's fully modular, which means none of the power cables are connected to it. So we're only gonna hook up the ones we actually need to it, which provides cleaner cable management within our build. We're gonna be hooking up a total of five cables to our power supply. First one is our 24 pin power cable. It's the big one, goes in like that. Second is a PCI Express cable to power our RTX 2080. Super, right there. Next are two CPU power cables. Also notice how I'm not hooking up the side with the text to the power supply. It's the side that doesn't have the text for all the cables. And both of those are gonna go right next to each other. And then our last cable, our SATA power cable, now we're done. So we're gonna be putting our power supply on its side, making sure that the fan is facing inside the case. The screws come with the power supply. So to make our build stand out even more, white custom sleeve power supply cables. This is a full kit. We're not gonna be using all the cables, only these three. So two to power our graphics card and one for our 24 pin power cable. So these serve as extension cables. They hook up to the original power supply cable. So there's our 24 pin. And then we have an eight pin PCI power cable and a six pin because that's how much juice the 2080 requires. The kit does come with a CPU power cable. We're not using it though, because it only comes with one. And for this build, we're actually gonna be using two CPU power cables. I wanna keep consistency. All right, guys, we're gonna start hooking up cables now. It may be overwhelming at first. A lot of cables are in front of us right now, but we break it down into three groups. So the first group is all our power supply cables. The second group is all the cables that are attached to our case, which serve to hook up the power button and our USB ports, as well as our head phone jack and microphone input of the case to the motherboard. And then our last group of cables is the fans. First, we're gonna get our case cables out of the way. First one's labeled HD audio, goes into the far left of our board. Only goes in one way, the HD audio text is facing up. Second, a USB cable for our 2.0 ports. So these little cables hook up to our JFP1 pins. First one, HDD LED, goes on the bottom left. On top of it, we're gonna put power LED. Notice that there's two. We're only gonna be using the small one. So right on top of it, it should only take up two pins. Next is our reset switch, which goes on the bottom right next to HDD LED. And our power switch goes on top of reset switch. And it should look like that. So above JFP1, we're gonna be hooking up our USB 3.0 cable. And then our final case cable is gonna light up this part of the case. That's gonna hook up to our SATA power supply cable. Moving on to our second group, our power supply cables. First cable is the big 24 pin one. Make sure the clip clips in and that's good to go. Next one, I routed both the CPU cables through here. I had to first take off the power supply to make room for them to go through there. So I was just re-securing my power supply. So first an eight pin CPU cable. And for the second CPU cable, we're only using half of it. We're gonna split it and it's gonna sit right next to it. That looks pretty clean. It's not that noticeable. If we put in the CPU power cables through this big indent right here, they would just, a lot more cable would be on display right here. But remember, power supply will have to be moved. So our final cables are for our graphics card. We'll come back to that in a bit. First, I wanna take care of the rest of the fans, hook them up to our motherboard, and then show you guys how to install our RGB LED strips. So we're gonna put the case on its side and we're gonna be removing both of these stands. So I'll just take off this rubber to reveal the screw. So remember guys, we're gonna have our cold there coming in from the bottom of the case. So you wanna make sure you put it in the proper position. For these fans, just have the logo facing down. So I'm gonna link up all three bottom fans and I'm gonna route them to the back side of the case. We picked up a five pack of fan extension cables. So we have two case fan headers, one right here and one right here. So I got two extension cables hooked up to both of them and I'm also gonna route those to the back side of the case. 
So we hook up our three bottom fans to one of the extension cables. And I'm just gonna hook up another extension cable to the extension cable. And then I'm gonna connect our three top fans alongside with the one side fan together. And to connect them to the motherboard, we hook it into the final extension cable. So our RGB LEDs are magnetic. I hook them both up together. I'm gonna place one up here and the other one on the side. To connect it to the motherboard, we're gonna connect one end of the cable to one of the ends of the lights, and the other end's gonna go into our motherboard, but I have to remove these pins first. So just like the cable we use for our lights on the heatsink fan, we're gonna be hooking this one up to an RGB LED slot. Again, lining up the V with the 12 volt pin. That looks good. So we paid 740 for our 2080 Super. This is Gigabyte's gaming OC version. The Gigabyte text does light up on this card. What's cool about this one though, is that the color like matches our Funko Pop exactly. For example, she's rocking yellow and silver and the card actually comes with this part already silver. This card rocks one HDMI port, three display ports. We're gonna make room for our card by removing the second and third row brackets. All right guys, so we're gonna be lining up this part of the card with our first PCI slot, we wanna pull this back and we're gonna line it up. Once it's into place, we then push in till the clip comes back up. There we go. And finally, we hook up our juice. There we go. Everything is connected and ready to go now. I'm just gonna cable manage everything. All right, let's see what we come up with. So for those of you who are following along, congratulations. It's fully put together. First boot up. All right, power button in the front right here. And like I mentioned, it's gonna light up. When you turn on your system for the first time, the lights are always gonna be going crazy. Once we install the lighting software, we'll then be able to customize it to our liking, totally tame the lights. But anyways, guys, if you haven't yet turned on bell notifications for the channel, be sure to do so so you can be alerted for the future build guides. All right, guys, we're gonna be moving on to the installation of Windows now. And then at the very end, we're gonna be playing our games. We're gonna be installing Windows 10 onto our PC by a USB flash drive with the Windows 10 files already copied onto it. I made a video tutorial on how to create a drive like this, or you can just purchase a USB flash drive with the files already copied onto it. I'm gonna hook it up to a USB port on our system and then power it on. So because our SSD is empty, it's gonna boot directly to our flash drive. So I don't have a product key and I'm gonna be selecting Windows 10 Pro, except the license agreement. I always select custom. If we had more than one drive hooked up to our PC, it would display multiple. We just have a single one terabyte SSD, so I'm gonna be selecting that one next. And this is gonna be fairly fast. Okay, so the files are done copying over. Once the computer restarts, we can then disconnect our flash drive. So this is gonna take a sec, just let it do its thing. And we'll eventually arrive at this screen. Once we arrive here, that's how you know all the files have been copied over successfully. I can now disconnect our flash drive and it's all good. I'm gonna select my region. This is pretty simple, it's just like if you bought a new PC. Just gonna pick a username and password and settings that you prefer. So I'm just gonna fast forward through this part. All right, we made it. Windows is officially installed. We download our motherboard drivers from the website. It's linked in the video description. We're gonna select Windows 10 64 bit and I am gonna show you guys how to update the BIOS. So we'll go ahead and download the latest version, save as, everything's gonna go to my desktop. So as far as the drivers, we are gonna download the audio driver, the LAN driver for our ethernet port. That is how I'm connected to the internet right now, but it works before the driver's even installed. I still recommend you install it though. Under utilities, we're not gonna download anything from there. For wireless, I'm gonna click see all downloads and go down to version 21.10.0.5. Download that one. Our chipset driver for our 3700X, download. And I'm gonna skip SATA. Bluetooth, definitely want that one. I'm downloading version 21.10.0.6. And that's it from here. So now we're on the ASUS Aura Programs website. I'm gonna go over to download. This is the program that we're gonna use to control all the lights within our build. Choose a version, just one option. And save as to my desktop. We can't install these yet. First, we have to unzip them. So right click, extract all, extract, and it automatically opens up our extracted folder, which is this one right here. I'm gonna do the same for all the other folders. So once we have them all unzipped, we don't need these anymore. Delete. Starting off with our audio driver. I'm gonna click setup. Yes. I'll restart the computer later. Next, our LAN driver for our ethernet port. Setup. Yes. 
all right that's done i'm gonna do the wi-fi one first auto run yes check the little box install all right cool went through finish so now if we go down here our wi-fi card should be working now and it is i don't have the antenna that comes with the motherboard hooked up to it right now if i had the antenna hooked up all these little icons right here would boost all right so now our bluetooth i'm gonna click asus setup for this one yes and that's it it just pops up and then disappears right away but our bluetooth's working next one is our amd chipset driver setup yep Accept and custom install. All right, it's searching on the internet for new drivers. Install. All this looks good to me. Install. We're not gonna restart just yet. And our last program is our Asus Aura lighting control. I'm gonna click setup. Yes. It just popped up right here. All right, finish. I'll restart it later. Okay. All right, so we have all this stuff installed now. This could go. This is our BIOS is what we're left with. I'm going to restart our computer though and show you guys the lighting control. So double click this. Whoa, why are you so tiny? Okay, that, that's not right. <laughs> why is it so small? Okay, let's close this and open it again. Yes. What? What? My monitor's at 4K right now. 1920 by 1080p. All right, now we're good. Now we can reopen this now and it won't be so small. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to go over to static and i'm gonna change this to a blue tint check it out boom top one is not working don't do this turn off your pc and then mess with it must not be connected right yep it wasn't connected right the v was not lined up with the other v okay that made a big difference we're gonna update the bios now so empty usb flash drive hooked it up it's gonna pop up open so now we're gonna be dragging the bios file into the flash drive and i'm gonna restart our computer and keep clicking delete on our keyboard when it boots back up so we can boot into the bios all right so now we go over to advanced mode and we go over to tool asus flash 3 utility via storage devices next it automatically pops up since we don't have much hooked up to the pc right here it says what version 1405 is what we're going to be updating to because if we take a look up here the version we currently have is 1404 it's possible that you already have the newest bios so if you do then you can just go ahead and skip this step are we going to update it yes yes again we're going to let it do its thing it's very important that your system does not lose power during this process because if it does it's going to corrupt the bios on the motherboard and you're gonna have to send it back to the manufacturer to repair or you're gonna have to repair it yourself it's just really annoying better to avoid it also this is not required updating the bios is totally optional it may or may not improve your system stability all right it finished system's gonna reboot now and again i want to go back to our bios so now we want to make sure that we're getting the performance we should be getting with our ram stick this is a kit rated for 3600 megahertz if we take a look up here it's currently running at 2133 megahertz so in order to get the performance we paid for we have to go over to advanced mode and go over to ai tweaker and under ai overclock tuner we're going to select dlcp okay now if we look down here memory frequency it sets it to 3600 megahertz so now exit save changes and reset it's going to review our changes yes that's what we want okay so our system restarted we can disconnect this flash drive now we're done with everything on the motherboard side now for our graphics card drivers we're on nvidia's website we're going to download the geforce experience i linked it in the video description yup agree and install gonna skip the tour we're gonna head over to drivers and download so it's automatically gonna download the newest drivers for our rtx 2080 super express installation yes screen went black for a second but that's normal when installing graphics card drivers close and we are done we can now download games so depending on where you guys are coming from when downloading games on pc there's a lot of different clients we got steam for a lot of different games we have blizzard for overwatch and call of duty modern warfare 2019 and whatnot world of warcraft epic games is for fortnite and other titles as well and then origin is for the new ea titles i'll show you guys steam as an example install steam Yes. All right, Siege, install, I agree, and that's it pretty easy so once we're done downloading it we can just launch it and start playing it restart your computer before you do so though because we just installed new graphics card drivers anyways guys the moment we've been waiting for let's frag it up playing some call of duty modern warfare 2019 our settings fairly high yeah.
understand me. I'm like I need a candy. She needs the flow of the designer panties. Never put a candy to the pantry from the sound wave to the rebel lines from the tattered bridge. I'm gonna put the dishes on the fucking ears with these new bananas. Whoa! Boom! All the grenade got him. Oh! What's this guy doing? Oh, come on, boy. 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 Come on, Yo! Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna switch to my other game. No one has ever done that! No one has ever done that! I'm close to a kill streak. Oh, oh, no! No! I got my sentry gun. But I didn't get to use it. We won no. though. Oh, watch out! Oh my god, get out of here, it's gonna blow! Oh, it's no effects from that far. Haha, <laughs> behind you. There he is. Hello! Dude! Oh. I still have a chance, but it ain't looking good. Oh, he's AFK. Oh, that was a fun match, though. Moving on to some reach on the Master Chief Collection. As far as the settings for this, you only have two options. I picked Enhanced 1080p. Take the fight to them, get on! <laughs> oh my god! Pizza time. Oh, hey, buddy! Oh. Oh, what's up? Bro, get away from me! <laughs> Triple kill time! Ah, oh, sh. <laughs> Gotta be sneaky. Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, I hit a home run. Oh. Oh. No. Time for some overwatch. Settings we're going to be using. Ultra settings preset and our render scale is set to 100%. Job, team. Moving on to Apex Legends, our settings. These are both disabled. Oh! Oh no, final last words. Doesn't look very promising. Oh, it's right there! I got you, oh. man! Make a troop, let's make a troop. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, wait, let me try to hip fire you, alright? If I kill you, I kill you, alright? Oh, it worked. Sorry. I right, look, there's a grenade, it's live, alright? One, two, three, catch. Wait, wait, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, shut the up! <laughs> Can anyone in this lobby recommend me a good audio book? Moving on to Fortnite, the settings we're using. I have the view distance on Epic, textures are on Epic. Everything else is a mix of medium or off. What's I'll up? do it. Let's do this. No. I picked up two mini guns on the map. Let's test this gun out. I've never used it. Surprise! <laughs> Pretty 
pretty effective. Let's move on to another game. We're gonna play some team deathmatch. Here's our settings. Medium, medium. I do have the texture on ultra and the view distance on ultra and all this stuff right here is disabled. Who's gonna get first blood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Reload took too long. We won. Nice. Playing some siege now. Settings. I have the quality on ultra 16 times, and then I start lowering stuff for competitive settings. Anti aliasing, it's not at off. I like FXAA because the game just looks better. Let's play. Oh! Boom. Oh, that was a messy kill, but it worked. What the? Oh, shoot. Oh, that was close. Unraced in the bag. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up right there. If you haven't turned on bell notifications for the channel, be sure to do so so you can be alerted for future build guides. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for all your guys' support. Peace. <laughs>